Okay, thank you very, very much for the introduction. So I'm, I'm Pam Jong Yang from uh, Seoul Relations University, and also from the Center for Correlated Electron System uh, Institute for Basic Science. So, uh, I first would like to thank the organizer for giving me this great opportunity uh, to talk about my recent work. So I'm going to talk about topological superconductivity in central symmetric uh, magnetic metal. So the, the, the key player of this project is one of my students, Sung Woon Lee, and also uh, my former student, Dr. Jun Young An, who is at Harvard University of Boston now. And my talk is based on these two uh, recent uh, publications. So, okay, so the so magnetism and superconductivity are two important quantum mechanical ground state. And not only the individual phenomenon, but also their interplay are a very important problem. So in, in several compounds, actually, we often see both actually magnetism and superconductivity. And these are, are two actually uh, particular examples. Uh, traditionally in this uh, system, actually, uh, one important uh, problem is to understand the nature of superconductivity around the region uh, near this uh, uh, quantum critical point of magnetism. The region is in this region because of the strong uh, spin fluctuation. So one may expect some unconventional superconductivity. But uh, in my talk, actually I'm not interested in this uh, quantum critical point. Instead, I'm interested in this uh, wide region where the, the superconductivity coexists with a stable uh, magnetism. So, so this region is important because here the background uh, magnetic ordering can modify the symmetry of normal state, which is strongly constrained the possible pairing function. And because of this, we can expect a noble um, magnetic topological superconducting state protected by the magnetic space group. So actually there are several compounds where the, the coexisting magnetism and superconductivity is reported. Uh, for instance, in cerium rhodium in D5, here the antiferromagnetism superconductivity is coexisting. And also in, in the case of uranium based superconducting system, here the ferromagnetism and superconductivity can coexist. And also more recently in the twisted double bilayer graphene, so the, the coexisting ferromagnetism and superconductivity is also actually reported. So, so this is the outline of my talk. So basically I'm going to talk about two topics, or two related topics. One is about the old parity uh, spin triplet superconductivity in anti-ferromagnetic metal. And the second topic is about the high order uh, topological superconductivity of spin polarized band. So let me actually start the first part. So here is actually the band structure of the simple uh, paramagnetic metal with a uh, uh, inversion symmetry. So in this system, because of the inversion and time reversal symmetry, so at each momentum k, which we have a spin degeneracy. So basically at each momentum k, spin up and down state are related by this combined PT symmetry. Since the, the Fermi surface is spin and degenerates, so the, the pairing between spin up electron and momentum k and spin down electron at momentum minus k can give a conventional as a single spin single uh, pairing. Uh, on the other end, in the case of the ferromagnet, so because of the magnetization, it's really we have a spin speed band structure. In this case, actually, the Fermi surface is actually a spin polarized. So since the, 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 at the momentum k and minus k, the spin directions are the same, so we can naturally expect a spin triplet pairing, at least in the weak pairing limit. Uh, but the, the question I'm interested in here is, uh, can we expect a spin triplet pairing in, in antiferromagnet? Okay. Uh, but unfortunately, actually, in general, actually the, the, the answer is no. Okay. So to see actually, what's happening in antiferromagnetic system, so let's uh, think about the, the simple Janel type antiferromagnet on a, to this uh, lattice, as shown in this in this figure. So one important property of this anti-ferromagnetic system is that in this system we can still see the uh, spin degenerate uh, band structure, although the time reversal symmetry is broken. So then actually we naturally have a spin since the Fermi surface is spin degenerate. Actually, we can naturally expect the conventional uh, spin singlet pairing. 
Then the question is why? Why is the spin degenerate to still survive? Okay, survive uh, even though the time reversal symmetry is broken. So the answer is actually pretty simple. So although the the magnetic ordering break the time reversal symmetry, the system uh, still preserves the uh, so-called effective time reversal symmetry t tilde. So this effective time reversal is basically the combination of the time reversal and the half translation. So if we combine these two symmetry operations, we see that the original spin state uh, can be uh, recovered. Okay? Then the, by combining the effective time reversal with the inversion symmetry, so we can define a K local anti-unitary symmetry that satisfies actually this relationship. But this actually guarantees the uh, basically Kramer's degeneracy at each momentum k. And this is the reason why we have a spin degenerate Fermi surface, the band structure in antiferromagnetic metal. Then the, if you want to achieve the spin triplet pairing in antiferromagnetic metal, so the idea is uh, very simple. Okay. So we just need to break the this effective time reversal symmetry. So, so one simple way of breaking this effective time reversal symmetry is by, by introducing some local inversion symmetry breaking perturbation, which preserve the global inversion symmetry. So let me explain what, what's the meaning of this. We can first uh, consider the stagger potential shown here. So here, the red and blue dot in, uh, have a different on-site potential. So in this case, the inverted symmetry about the midpoint of a bone is obviously broken, while the, the inverted symmetry with respect to a lattice side still preserved. Okay, this is the meaning of the local inverted symmetry breaking. Another example is actually is shown here. So when the system has some rotational distortion, actually, which is actually realized in strong degree compound. We see that the inversion about the, the, the center of a bone is, is broken, while the inversion about the, with respect to the lattice side is still preserved. Okay. So in this talk, I'm going to mainly talk about the role of the distagger potential because this is the simplest form of the, this local inversion symmetric breaking uh, perturbation. So here we study actually basically two simple toy models with a high symmetry. Uh, one is the out of plane uh, anti ferromagnetic state with a stagger potential. The other is actually in plane anti ferromagnetic state with a, a stagger potential. So, in, in both cases, actually, the, the normal state Hamiltonian uh, can be uh, described by this simple uh, Hamiltonian. And the, the first part uh, uh, described the hopping, and the, the second term, which we described the on site actually uh, potential. And also the and the, the, the last part basically described the uh, anti ferromagnetic ordering uh, within the mean field approximation. So here the let me show you the, the, the Fermi surface of this anti ferromagnetic state with and without the uh, stagger potential. So without the stagger potential, as I said before, so because of effective time reversal symmetry, we have a, a spin degenerate Fermi surface. So once you introduce the, this uh, stagger potential, actually. Uh, and break the effective time reversal symmetry. So we immediately see the, the spin splitting and uh, we have a spin polarized as a Fermi surface. Then actually we can, uh, as in the case of ferromagnets, uh, so in this case we can uh, expect some spin triple pairing can be favored, at least in the weak, weak pairing limit. Okay. So, so to study the, this uh, superconducting uh, pairing uh, more carefully, so we, we, we study the uh, the uh, Bogolov design is a mean field Hamiltonian. So here, the, this pairing function delta is obtained actually from the, uh, this type of interaction term. So here, the U indicates the uh, on site uh, attraction, and V indicates the uh, inter site attraction. And, which, and this interaction term is treated by the self consistent mean field theory. So, so before I actually uh, talk about the superconducting uh, ground state, so let me briefly mention the, the, the chemical potential dependence of the, the Fermi, uh, uh, Fermi surface. So but this is basically the normal state uh, band structure. So here we see that when the Fermi level is around here or here, actually we have a, a single uh, Fermi surface. So on the other hand, when the Fermi level is between the, these two, around here, actually we have a, a two Fermi surface. 
So in the case of single Fermi surface, uh, the property of superconducting state is quite similar to the case of ferromagnets. So I will not discuss about this case. But, and, and focus on the, the case two with the two actually uh, uh, Fermi surface. So here we classify the possible uh, pairing function using the, the symmetry of the magnetic ground state. So in the case of out of plane uh, AFM, actually the, we have a D4H point group symmetry and, uh, and the DGL the relevant actually a pairing function. And, and so in the case of in plane AFM, Actually, we have a D2H point group symmetry and these are the relevant actually pairing function. So uh, at first, so for this outer plane AFM, we found that uh, spin triplet and all the parity pairing give a stable uh, superconducting ground state. So in this figure here, the, this blue solid line and red solid line basically indicate the spin up and down Fermi surface of the normal state. And also here, the, the this uh, distance between the solid line and dotted line, basically this thickness indicates uh, the size of the pairing gap. Then the basically this state basically indicates the fully gap, the superconducting state. Uh, on the other hand, uh, in the case of in-plane AFM, uh, we again found that spin three flat old parity pairing can uh, give a stable uh, ground state. And, but in this case, we found that there are four actually nodal points along the uh, KX direction. So in the case of this uh, pairing function that belong to BU actually, it leads representation. We again have a nodal superconducting state, but the, but the nodal points are lined along the uh, KY, KY direction. So in the case of this gapped uh, superconducting state, uh, so arising from this out of plane AFM, Actually, uh, uh, we found that uh, the gap state is basically have a topological property. So we found that uh, uh, if you neglect the spin of coupling, the, the, the BDG Hamiltonian uh, take the block diagonal form and each block carry the finite chunk number with the opposite sign. So because of this, if we introduce the boundary of the system, we can see the two uh, counter propagating edge mode with the opposite spin polarization at, 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 at one edge of the, of the sample. Here, the, actually, the, this crossing is protected only when the spin of coupling is actually neglected. So once we include the spin of coupling, what's happening is, is like this. Uh, when the system preserves the, the mirror symmetry about the XY plan, in this case, actually, still the, uh, this crossing point is symmetry protected, we have a stable the propagating edge mode, edge state. But on the other hand, when the system break the, uh, this mirror symmetry, then actually the spin of the coupling can induce the hybridization between these two states. And eventually we have a fully gapped edge spectrum. Uh, but the interesting, the resulting uh, gapped uh, 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 superconducting state, it becomes the 2D uh, second order topological superconductor protected by the inversion symmetry. So here, let me uh, briefly uh, explain what is the higher order topological superconductor. So in the case of the conventional uh, 2D topological superconductor, we can see the uh, gamlet uh, metallic state along moving along the one d one dimensional boundary of the system. Nowadays, uh, this kind of the topological superconducting state is called the one the 2D first order topological superconductor. And then in the case of 2D second of the uh, topic superconductor, the, instead of the 1D uh, propagating edge mode, we have a zero dimensional uh, minor not zero mode. And this is the, the defining property of the 2D uh, second of the topic superconductor. So to confirm this minor not zero mode, we study the energy spectrum of this uh, finite size system and found that there are two actually zero mode, which are nothing but uh, actually two a localized actually uh, minor not zero mode. Okay. Uh, in the case of the in-plane AFM, actually we have a nodal superconductivity, and uh, the corresponding edge spectrum actually looks like this. So here we see the uh, flat actually uh, edge mode, which are, are connecting the the projection of the uh, bulk nodal point. Okay. So here I plot the energy spectrum along the this direction. 
that the, this type of the edge spectrum is stable only when we neglect the spin of coupling. So in this case, once we include the spin of coupling, we can eventually get uh, uh, the fully gapped edge spectrum. And the, the, the whole system become, again, 2D second order topological superconductor with a minor uh, corner mode. So we propose that this idea can be tested in, uh, in this type of heterostructure composed of the anti magnet with a stagger potential uh, sandwiched by uh, S8 superconductor. And as a candidate for this anti magnet with a stagger potential, we think the double pair of sky with anti magnetism is a good candidate. Because in this system, we have two different uh, magnetic sites, which obviously have a different on site uh, potential. So for this particular material, actually, uh, we performed the first principle calculation and found that actually, we actually see the spin split, actually, spin polar like for me surface uh, because of the broken uh, effective time reverse symmetry. So we think this is uh, one you know, good. Actually, this H band structure can, uh, can stabilize the old parity spin triplet pairing. Then, the, depending on the direction of the magnetic ordering, we get either a fully gapped superconducting state or a nodal superconducting state. But once we include a strong uh, enough uh, spin of coupling, we eventually get the 2D at the second order topological superconductor. Okay, so uh, now, now let me move on to the second part about the high order topological superconductivity of spin polarized band. So here actually we are interested in this spin polarized band such as half metallic system because in this system we can naturally expect uh, equal spin pairing, which means that orbital path should have a old parity. Okay. Uh, uh, generally, old parity pairing is pretty interesting because it often gives a topological superconductor. So one which a famous example of, of this uh, this idea is that is so something called the Hulbog Sato criterion for the time reversal and inversion symmetric system. So what this criterion means is, is like this: when the normal state have a uh, old number of Fermi surface, then the old parity pairing can give a topological superconductor. Okay, so. So according to this criterion, if the normal state have a single Fermi surface, okay, then all the parity pairing give a topological superconducting state. On the other hand, if the normal state have a two Fermi surface, then the all the parity pairing give a just trivial superconducting state. Okay, that's the meaning of this Hubbard uh, Sato criterion. So the, the the basic idea underlying this criterion is actually the picture of a band inversion. So we know that if we start from the uh, normal insulator with a conduction band and balance band with the opposite parity, when there's a band inversion happen, the resulting band structure have a topological property. So we know that we are pretty familiar with this picture. So we can apply this idea to the problem of the superconductivity in the following way. So suppose that uh, we have a single electron band in the normal state with a negative parity at the, at the center. So if you introduce the pairing, actually then the single particle spectrum uh, is composed of the electron band and whole band. And in, in particular, when the pairing function has an even parity, here the both electron band and whole band have a same parity. So on the other hand, in the case of all the parity pairing, here the electron band and whole band have an opposite parity. So if you carefully look at this actually band structure, we can consider it as a result of the band inversion between two bands with opposite parity. Uh, this is the reason why we can expect the non trivial topological property for odd parity pairing when the number of Fermi surfaces is equal to odd in the normal state. So, according to this idea, so when the normal state has a single Fermi surface, odd parity pairing generates the band inversion only one time, so we, then we can get the topological superconductivity. On the other hand, when the 
Fermi's, we have a, when we have a two Fermi circuit, all the peri parity parity induced the uh, band inversion two times, then we have uh, just trivial uh, superconducting state. Okay, that's what's happening. But uh, this Hubbock is had to criterion and can be applied only to the first order uh, topological superconductor. So what we did in this work is we generalized this idea to the high order topological superconductor. So actually the one simple way of understanding high order band topology is, uh, is, 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 uh, is using the, the band inversion, okay? So what it means is we can start from the, this type of the trivial uh, insulating state where we, where we have a two uh, unoccupied band with a negative parity and two occupied band with a positive parity. Then the band, uh, band inversion happen between these four band and such a band inversion is called the W band inversion and the resulting actual band structure have a high order topological property, okay? So this is basically the band inversion picture for high order topology. So now let me apply this idea to the, the superconductivity problem. So, so suppose that in the normal state, we have a two uh, electron band with a negative parity. So in this situation, if you introduce the old parity pairing, we can generate the two electron band, a whole band with a, a positive parity, okay? Then if you carefully look at this actual band structure, this is actually exactly the same as uh, this type of the doubly inverted actually band structure, okay? So we can expect a uh, higher topological property in this situation. Uh, similarly, if the normal state has the uh, one electron band and one whole band with opposite parity, then the old parity pairing generate the same type of the, the, the uh, single particle spectrum, then we can expect a higher order uh, topological superconductivity. Then based on this idea, we can easily actually uh, uh, derive the, the criterion for the higher topological superconductivity. So we just need to count the number of uh, double Fermi surface in the normal state. So if the normal state has uh, one uh, double Fermi surface, then the old parity pairing give a high order topological superconductor. So on the other hand, if the normal state has uh, two uh, double Fermi surface, then the old parity pairing give a just trivial superconductor. Okay, this is the idea. So, but in the case of this type of the normal state band structure, actually, uh, actually uh, at the center of the Fermi surface, we have a time reverse invariant momentum. Okay, so in this case, actually, if we introduce the old parity pairing, actually, we often see the the appearance of the nodal point. So, in this case, we basically have a, a nodal superconductor. So on the other hand, when we have a, this type of the uh, normal state band structure, actually this is nothing but uh, the band structure of the uh, Dirac semi-metal. We have a two Dirac point here and here, okay? But since the, the Dirac point is generally located at the generic point in the momentum space, and the corresponding Fermi surface actually looks like this. So in this case, actually the old parity pairing can give a fully gapped uh, superconducting state. So in that respect, actually the doped Dirac semi-metal is a better candidate to realize a fully capped uh, higher topological superconductor. So we, we tested this idea for various uh, type binding uh, model uh, Hamiltonian. So when we introduced old parity pairing to the 2D doped Dirac semi-metal of the spin polarized system, basically we get the 2D uh, second order topological superconductor with a minor core mode. Uh, in the case of 3D actual nodal line semi metal, so we found the old parity pairing give a uh, nodal line actually superconductor, but interestingly, here the nodal line carried uh, actually a monopole charge. And finally, so if we consider the 3D monopole nodal line semi metal, we found that old parity pairing actually give a uh, 3D sold out the uh, topological superconductor with a minor corner mode. So we think uh, basically the uh, many uh, the, the half metallic, uh, semi-metallic system can be a good candidate where uh, this type of uh, idea can be applied. So we are, there, are not, there are several candidates for 2D half metallic Dirac semi-metal and 3D uh, half metallic nodal line semi-metal. Okay. 
So, okay, so let me summarize the, the part two. So basically here we propose that the distop Dirac sentimental state of the spin polarized band can be a good candidate uh, to realize high autopolar superconductor. So once you introduce the old parity pairing, which is naturally supported by this uh, spin polarized band structure, we can realize the higher the topological superconductor. Yeah, okay, uh, uh, that, that's your work. Thank you for your attention.